So it, it's super, and I don't regret that experience. It built up a lot of tough skin, a lot of experience with bad guests, right? So I'm happy that I had it at the beginning versus later down the road. And it just helped me in my, in my short-term rental journey. But yes, I, I do think now it's one of those things where it's like, if people are coming to me, like I'm taking a conscious effort to choose, is this going to be a good fit? What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Shogren here with my co-host, Emmanuel Pani. We're part of a group of specialized real estate investors you've probably never heard of. We didn't start with deep pockets or wealthy families, and we don't rely on 401ks, mutual funds, or traditional real estate investing. In fact, many of us don't even own the properties that fund our freedom. If you ask the money experts out there, they'd say what we do is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through a new niche called short-term rentals. We are Short-Term Rental Nation, and these are our secrets. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Short-Term Rental Secrets Podcast. I am your host, Mike Shogren, here with my main man and brother from another mother, Mr. Emmanuel Pani. What's going on, E? My brother. It's so good to be home. Um, yeah, dude, Instacart, like low-key, you like don't realize how amazing of a luxury it is. Like we're on our way home from the airport and we order all of our favorite things, literally from the Uber. And by the time we got home, unpacked, the groceries were outside. And just like, ah, America, you know, it's so nice. It's so, <laughs> it's so convenient. Like, you know, like, honestly, the biggest things that I realized going back home is just like how there people are just like, yeah, it is how it is, you know? And then here people are like, how, do, how, how can we fix that? Like, how can we make that more convenient, make it better, make it more of an experience and it's just why i don't know we always look at things with this idea of like okay how can we improve right like i've had the guy that has the little bar at the beach where i used to get ice cream when i was a kid so 21 years ago is when he opened it's the same same spot like he hasn't changed anything the colors are the same the stuff that he does i'm like why don't you do something else he's like why i like it like this i'm just like there's so much opportunity like right and you're just like ah oh, do more so you can do less and people are like i do less now why do i have to do more and you're just like shit you have a point and then it's just kind of like you know but it feels good feels good to be home yeah man. back in the routine cool. yeah dude and back doing this at a, at a reasonable time um because all of our sessions are like late night um definitely not a night person to do podcasts so i'm super grateful to be back Good to see you be on the same time zone as you and all of our friends. Um, that's also super helpful. Yeah, man. I love it. I love it. It's uh, <clears throat> people ask me all the time, you know, where do you, where do you get leads for your short-term rental business? And I always say the same thing. Like initially when you start, it's a lot of hustle. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of building relationships, but then like the lead flow just starts coming in. Like it's all referral based, like literally hundred percent referral based, right? Like we're launching another unit. I just got another one. Um, I'm going to go check it out tomorrow with the owner. And then I got an email last night for a potential hotel deal down the Cape. And then I just got off a phone call earlier with uh, our buddy, Ryan. I won't mention his last name for anonymity, but he's got another uh, deal that he's interested in partnering with me on. It's up in New Hampshire and it's 13 tiny cabins and then like four mm -hmm. little hotel rooms on this like piece of property. So starting to look at some numbers on that. But again, it's like, I'm not actively marketing for deals. It's just, these are all referral based. So if you do a good job, you become a good operator, you're going to just start generating more and more leads. Right. And so today, actually, we've got Claire on, I'll announce her in a second and read her bio, but like, you know, it's the same thing, like working your network, trying to figure out how to get in but then once you do, like, you're just going to keep getting more and more referrals once you get results for clients. It's, it's mm -hmm. just the way business works. So just focus on becoming a really good operator and the leads will flow. So mm -hmm. with that being said, let me, let me pull up Claire's bio here because I want to make sure I get Claire's bio right. So, uh, so today on the show, we've got Claire Rosenberg. She is 26 years old. She is from the suburbs of Chicago, now lives in New York City. She's one of five kids and has a fraternal twin. I did not know that, Claire. Uh, yeah. She currently works at LinkedIn as a customer success manager, and she does real estate investing on the side. 
She owns two units in Cumberland, Indiana, and manages eight short-term rentals for homeowners all remotely. She's the co-host of the Millennial Millionaires Through Real Estate podcast with our buddy, John Farber. And she created a podcast course to document their entire process and help others start their own podcast as well. She got started in short-term rentals by joining the Short-Term Rental Secrets Mastermind and decided Ooh. to go the co-hosting route. Without further ado, Claire, welcome to the show. Thank you. What an introduction. You know, I guess well, I wrote. <laughs> yeah, your resume is pretty solid now. It's getting up there. It's getting up there. So yeah. why don't you kind of walk us back through you know, what triggered you, I guess, to get into real estate investing? And then what was the trigger to pivot into the short-term rental space? Yeah, no, it's like a loaded question. We'll be concise, right? Um, so yeah, I would, I would say that it all started with um, my friend, Jonathan Farber. So I know you mentioned him. He was a huge impact on my real estate journey. We had worked together previously at a corporate company together um, and just, it, we clicked. And um, everything kind of snowballed. And my biggest thing was just adding value. So continuously adding value and working on projects with John. And then everything just happens organically. It takes the pressure off. Um, and that's kind of like how everything has gone with the projects that I work on. Um, it, it just goes into it organically there. So um, John was really a big impact on getting my first two units in Cumberland, Indiana. Those are long-term rentals as a start to get your feet wet, right? Um, and I don't regret that. Um, those are going well. And, and then from there, I um, went to Raleigh and I have some friends there and visited John and he was like, okay, Claire, like what's next for you? And there's always that like pressure with him, like good pressure, right? Accountability. And, you know, I, I didn't have any money left from scraping away everything I could for the long-term rentals. Um, not like necessarily you could say it's an excuse. I, I would say I'm more of that person who doesn't love to ask people for money. Um, but I, I do, I, I've learned about myself that I love um, processes and doing the operations piece. And I like owning without having to like pay for a new roof. You know, I'm always like, oh, when the long-term rental roof has to be replaced, like maybe we want to sell it. I don't know, right? We'll see then. So with with co-hosting, I was like, oh, like John, you know, has a lot of success with short-term rentals and um, you were on our podcast, which is super cool, full circle. And I know Mike Riley had a lot of success. Um, and I was like, you know, we're going to do this. And I had never, um, I'm like a very honest, transparent person. Your course was the first thing that I had invested or besides like a smaller mentorship for lease options, but your course was like, it was the most amount of money that I've ever spent. I was sweating. Um, and it's one of those things where you're like, okay, like you have to invest in yourself. You have to spend money to make money, which is like a big thing. And I was like, okay, we're going to do this. And um, at, at the beginning, you know, you have so many like doubts and I know like you're a big believer on mindset. Right. And um it's just really the never giving up mentality and knowing that if you do the right things, everything will fall into place. But um, yeah, I started your uh, short-term rental secrets mastermind in November before the Thanksgiving Black Friday special, <laughs> but we should. <laughs> um, and then um, it's kind of, I mean, I guess we'll kind of go more into like what I'm doing now with the, with the coasting, but I love I'm so happy I chose the co-hosting route, you know, obviously with your course, it's if you want to purchase arbitrage or do co-hosting. So it just, it really, I love being a part of real estate without having to spend money. So. So what's, what, how has that journey been for you? So you started in November. Yeah. You had a little bit of a slow start and then I feel like it picked up pretty quick. So like, what, what did that look like for you? You know, cause we had talked in the program about like, a lot of the personal development and like building confidence and going out there and like knowing your value and the value that you can provide, you know, through this service. So like, what did that, what did that look like for you? And how did you go about getting that first deal? Yeah. So it's funny. I, and I mentioned this on the coaching call on Tuesday, love the coaching calls. Um, and I said, like, I'm that person who like on the first date said like, will you marry me? Right. <laughs> so it was like with mentor, with partner. So no, I haven't done that for first dates, but I'm saying, um, I had connected with Alex for Shears, who was on our podcast as well. It's like funny how the power of connecting with people. Right. 
Um, and she had a good vibe about me. I'm a very genuine person. And um, we linked up for her first co-hosting property um, in Norfolk, Virginia. And, and from there, um, so much good hands-on learning for that property to really feel comfortable and build that confidence that I, that I can do this, right? That I can do this. So um, through that, um, I started with that property. And then um, John, I do a lot of projects with him. And um, he, with like taking your course and having the confidence in me, um, he allowed me to manage his four properties at the time um, all over North Carolina. Um, so that was like a really uh, cool thing for me of getting all these properties stood up in a short amount of time and really expedited my knowledge uh, with feeling comfortable with short-term rentals. Um, and then from there, so we're at five there, the Norfolk and then John's four. And then funny, funny enough, we had someone stay at our property and they didn't like their property manager. And they just said like, Hey, do you manage properties? And I said, yeah, I manage properties. And you know, they had a little bit of like hesitation. I was just starting out, but you know, um, the idea that, you know, I had a team here, you know, and I have all of these people that I can count on, right. It allowed them to kind of, uh, take their guard down there. So now we're at, that was sick there. And then, um, in Pinehurst, you know, uh, just referrals. So, you know, um, John's friend had a, uh, bought a, a rental in Pinehurst. And then, um, another one was, uh, a referral in R Cary, North Carolina, which is near Raleigh, one of our rentals. Um, and then someone from the podcast just called me. I was on a sync with John and I was like, you're trying to stay in Pinehurst. I'm confused. Cause I never answer calls unless I know who it is. I like to mentally prepare myself. If it's important to leave a voicemail or a text, that's what I've learned. And so I was like, can I call you at, like in a little bit? And then he was like, we need you to manage this property in DC. And men are overly optimistic and unrealistic with expectations, sorry. But I was like, we're not getting the property set up in a week. That just, we're not doing it, you know? Um, but so yeah, it's been this like coach, how, how you've said, and I call coach, coach, but my coach, but um, it's been this snowball effect of referrals, which you kind of brought up at the beginning. I'm not actively at the beginning, you know, I was doing the whole like calling people on Zillow and Trulio and you can do it. Shout out to Daryl. Love Daryl. Love your accent. Love your drive. Okay. So shout out to Daryl. He, that he and Bernie too, I believe just like remembering, like you can get stuff off the of cold calls. Um, for me, I just want it. I, the referral route, it, it just, it just worked and it snowballed. And that's kind of, I'm following that strategy. I love it. Eve, were you going to say something? I don't want to. Yeah, no. Yeah. I love that. Um, I love how sweet you are. And, and I can definitely tell that that really comes across, um, which makes sense that you go with a referral route, right? I think if you're a sweet person doing the call calling can be very difficult. I, I, I've learned that the hard way doing real estate. Um, it's very difficult and it's very hard not to take it personally when people are mean to you because you're just, calling and bothering them and you're like I really want to help you I'll make your life better but that's it takes a little while to kind of get there um I would love to know because I think we have a lot of people I know I have a friend of mine Heather that actually listens to the show and she's in the similar shoes now in into wanting to grow she bought a property herself um what was the mindset switch or what was your aha moment on the mindset switch that made you say, okay, Claire, you, you got this, right? Like that you got those first four units with, with John. Right. And you could be like, well, John gave them to me because he knew me, liked me and trusted me. Right. But like, what was the mindset that made Claire scale from four units to eight units quite quickly? Yeah. And then I guess we have more too that are in pre-launch, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I think it's really hard. It is really hard. Um, and I, I think like coach, like you helped with, with that a lot. Like, I know I, I'm like a crier. I do come off. People say that I'm confident, but I, I am working on it. It's a work in progress. Right. But, um, 
I think that what was interesting with, with coach is he made me write in a journal every day. Um, and I would send screenshots to him. Um, so about visualizing it. Right. Um, so I think that was a part of it for me, everything is experience. So I'm like a naturally like nervous, anxious person, but it actually helps me with like my impatience to get things done. Um, so I actually don't mind that trait about me, but I think for me, it was just like, there was so much uncertainty and that's why I jumped into a partnership right away. You know, people have like pluses or minuses about partnerships, but for me, I'm a hands-on learner. So we could talk about it, but if I'm not doing it, I'm not going to feel comfortable. So the fact that I transitioned from like doing nothing to working with Alex for the Norfolk property and then working on John's properties, it was a very fast expedited process for me to like, okay, like I'm doing this with so many properties. Like I can do this. I know, like I'm learning every day, you know, there's so many new situations, but like, it's all just about solving the problem. You're not thinking about what it is, you're just thinking about, okay, how are we going to get to A to Z? And that's the only thing that you're focusing on and not taking it. I'm an emotional person and I know you're not supposed to be emotional in business, right? But I'm trying consciously to, you just can't take it personally. Um, so I think that was like the shift, I would say, yeah. is the experience is the common theme for me to feel comfortable. Yeah. And I think another thing you said that was super important is is mostly they do not take it personally. And and I have I have really had to embody that. Um I don't necessarily I I don't necessarily think I think that you can be emotional in business. I think that's an old paradigm. I think you can be emotional and passionate in business. Um uh, you just can't take things personally. Um also because I'm also a super big believer um that we are allowed and it is possible for us to just work with people that we like and that are in alignment with us. And we don't have to change ourselves to take on clients that ultimately are not a long-term fit um, because they're going to be your headache, right? And I realize more and more now, the more I think about the abundance that it's just available to us, the more I realize that I am allowed to say no and that something better is going to come, right? There's not a finite amount of opportunities. There is an infinite amount of opportunities. And in that infinite amount, there is the perfect piece for me, for my puzzle and for my puzzle of clients and properties that work perfectly with me and what I'm about and what I like and how I treat people and how I like to be treated from people. And I think at the beginning, you kind of take, and I know Mike, we have done this, right? We've talked about this in the past too. Mm-hmm. At the beginning, you take everybody because you're like, I need units. And it's just, it's just not worth it. You know, it's just not worth it. And I, I, I think we should all wear our emotions on our sleeve and just live life like that because it's, it's just more real. Like, it's just more, I don't know. Yeah, I, like, I love but how I, you brought that up. Because um, I like I remember, Coach, you're always big about saying like, not every deal is a good deal, right? So, but I do think there is something to be said at the beginning. You do want to just take everything to just soak it all in. So, like, w- funny enough, like we are the first property that I've ever uh, been a part of. We are dropping it for the reason of it's it's not a good fit. The homeowner is not someone who's taking the property seriously. If we have a problem, we want it solved the correct way, not lipstick on a pig, right? So it, it's super, and I don't regret that experience. It built up a lot of tough skin, a lot of experience with bad guests, right? So I'm happy that I had it at the beginning versus later down the road. And it just helped me in my in my short-term rental journey. But yes, I, I do think now it's one of those things where it's like, if people are coming to me, like I'm taking a conscious effort to choose, is this going to be a good fit? You know, cause I want to work with people that I like and um, I'd rather work with a couple people and have like the best of working with investors who are going to buy a bunch of properties, you know, or work with less properties that are making more money than mm-hmm. more properties that are making less money. I know a lot of people are like, I have to have a hundred units, you know, but like, I wouldn't mind just having 
10 units that are making this, like, I know that's an extreme example, but like, I'd rather have less units that are making more money than more units that are making less money. It's more headaches, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and, um, I think it's also such a great, like, if you're approaching somebody and this is just, just a tip for those that are, are doing the calling, uh, it's very much into putting that into the owner's mind too. It's like, I would love to come by, take a look at your property and see if we're a fit. See if, if I, if you like me and see if I like you. Right. Cause that has to be said too, because I think a lot of the time Two people street. call, yeah, people call and they're like, I have this property, da, 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 da. this is what you're going to do. I'm like, first of all, lately, and I don't know if this is just a thing of like getting older, but as soon as somebody telling me like, this is what you have to do, my like heart yanks back and is like, uh-uh, like we don't have to do anything. Like this is not, <laughs> we're not at a stage anymore in life that we have to do things. We either want to do things or we don't do things, right? And as you're approaching clients, the understanding that like, I'm here to help you and add value to your life and you're doing the same to me. And if we're, if we're a vibe, we're a vibe. If we're not, we're not, right? Um, Mike, I don't know if you have something, but I have something that's coming right up. That yeah, is, one thing, one thing yeah. I do want to cover, and we can cover this after if you want to keep this conversation rolling, but I do want to talk about a limiting belief that you had, Claire, and a lot of people had about, can I do this out of state, right? Because you were living in New York City. I don't even think you had a car, right? And it was no. like, how, how am I going to do this? Because New York City... A lot of regulations. I didn't recommend trying to do it in the city. I'm like, just trust me. You can absolutely do this out of state. And I definitely want to cover that on this. But E, if you wanted to pivot to whatever your question was, we can come back to that. No, I, I wanted to pivot about her talking how she does this while still having a nine to five. So they're very, we're, we're, we're going to pivot anyways. Um, so we can pivot whichever way you want. Yeah. Why don't we start with the nine to five and then we'll talk about the out of state element on top of the nine to five. So again, miss big, big misconception around short-term rentals is this is going to take way too much of my time. There's no way I can do this right now. And it is a lot of work at the beginning, but like once they're up and running, like I'd love your take um, on, on what that experience has been for you while working a full-time job. Yeah. So it's like, manager, are you listening to this? <laughs> so um, I'm someone who is extremely honest. I'm not trying to hide anything. So I do post every now and then on LinkedIn of like co on funny co-hosting stuff, not like trying to be salesy, but like, and I, and I have told my manager, um, that, you know, I do do co-hosting. I took off five days to set up a property and she's like so many exciting things. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but, um, so I would say, um, for me, I'm in a fortunate position where um, I'm in customer success and it's a salaried role and I came from sales development and I, I kind of just had that mentality where I'm not motivated to work harder because I'm getting paid the same amount of money regardless of how much I work, sad to say. Um, so I am just kind of coasting. Um, I am at the lowest on the totem pole as starting as a customer success. So I'm onboarding customers for LinkedIn learning, on-demand learning platform. And I do have a lot of flexibility. I get jokes from my parents. You work at LinkedIn like every day from my dad and my mom. Um, and I would say like, I'm not necessarily like the best employee. I would say like, I do get conversations from my manager. Like I'm sad to say like, and we'll get off of this, but I am that employee that's like not applying feedback, which is like the worst employee to have. Like I'm having these continuous conversations with my manager. I'm like, mm -hmm. like, I'll take quick action, you know? And then I'll just be like, no, I don't have time for that. So we keep having the same recurring conversations. And like, for me, I'm just kind of waiting till I'm on a pip. So that's like a performance plan. Um, but I would say like, I'm doing my job to the bare minimum without like getting fired <laughs> to say the least. Um, so yeah, it's like a very, up, man. <laughs> thank you. I'm not a it man, is. I'm it a woman. Is. But, honest, I, but that's yes. fully honest. I love it. Thank you. People are always like, Claire, you're so refreshing. I'm like, I'm just telling you how it is. That just, that's who I am. I tell everyone, everyone that I meet with, my, my manager wants to set me up with a, with a mentor. And I'm like, I'm doing co-hosting. Like I just tell everyone what I'm doing. I'm not trying to hide anything. So whatever, it will come back to me when it comes back to me. So, 
Um, yes, my, my job is fairly flexible, I would say. And no one likes meetings at 9 a.m. So I, I, I'm someone who's a night owl. So I'll go to bed at like 1 or 2 a.m. And then I'll wake up at like 9 or 10. I love to sleep in. Um, so, but my phone's always on loud if I need to get to something. Um, but yeah, so like with that balance, it hasn't really been that hard just with the role that I'm in. So I'm very fortunate. I, I would say I'm staying for the unlimited PTO and health insurance at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, we have free health insurance. Uh, so, so in terms of like, uh, so I'm very fortunate for that. And then um, I'm trying to think from what, what's the next part of the question? Well, like a, from like a tactical standpoint, like if somebody's yeah. trying to balance working a full-time job while starting this, like what advice would you give them? Even if they didn't have as much flexibility as you for like, if you had to go back and like prioritize when you're getting started, what are some of the things that you would focus on that you did focus on to get that first listing and then balancing your time to you know, leverage all the technology and autom- automations that we talk about to right. still be able to perform at your job while building this business on the side. Cause yeah. I know it's possible cause I've done it and so many other people have done it. And I think people just don't think that it's possible, but I'm like, right. I'm telling you like it's possible. Yeah, it is. It's a weird situation. Cause honestly, uh, when I was in like my sales development role and like lost 10 pounds <laughs> and like didn't have any friends and like was a top performer there. Cause I was like, so heads down. It, I was working 10 hour days cause it's all off of commission. So yes, you can do it for me. It just wouldn't work if I was in a, in a sales role because it's uncapped. So you just constantly want to work, work and work. So for me being in a salary role, it has been a lot easier. So just speaking from experience, I personally, and just in like the honest conversation, I don't know if I was still in sales development or if I was an enterprise sales rep, I don't think that I would be able to scale and like feel comfortable just thinking of that role and how extreme I am with like commission. Okay. But I wanted a work-life balance. So that's why I switched over 30 K salary cut and went over to CSM. Okay. So, but yes, I would say for people who let's say in the extreme are in a sales role or in another salary role, really being precious of your time. I know a lot of people are big on time blocking. I don't time block. I'm a multitasker. I do things in between. Right. I think maybe, uh, everything's like instant gratification, maybe for like the millennials, I would say, but I'm constantly, there's a text, there's an email, there's a team, there's a Slack. I'm just moving. I'm grooving, you know, nothing, everything's always happening at once. But yeah, I would say for the people who are like in a really busy job, taking advantage of, uh, of those time blocks. Um, especially if you're in a, in a commission job, because you're going to get paid directly to your effort. Right. Um, I would say in terms of automation, um, extremely helpful with like, with coaches program, talking about, you know, dynamic pricing, um, for price labs, utilizing smart B and B to send over all the automatic messages. And I love that smart B and B has all the templates in there. And then you can add your flair to make it more personal. Um, and then really having a great team on the ground. So having a, an amazing cleaner, an amazing handyman, a runner is huge. I recommend the Facebook groups to find any of those resources and go by referrals. Um, but I love my shout out to Crystal um, in Pinehurst, my military mom. I love you. Um, she handles five properties for me in Pinehurst. She lives like five minutes away from all of them. I met her at a mom's group or did not meet her, but met her through a mom's group on Facebook. So if you are not a mother, I had, I had to have her join a Raleigh Facebook group because I'm not a mother. Okay. Cause one of the questions says, do you have kids? And I don't have kids and I didn't want to lie, but I, I will say the Facebook groups before getting into real estate, I was like Facebook, people still go on Facebook. Right. But like huge for community, huge for best practices, huge to find referrals. So I think if you're in a full-time job, having your systems set up, having them be rock solid and then having a great team and backups um, will let you feel confident to balance the two. So for yeah. context, for the listeners, when you say runner for folks that haven't yes. heard that term, what Sorry. does that mean for the business? I know a lot of people don't know. So it's really, so as coach is saying, I manage all the properties remotely. So it could literally be anything that I can't do. Cause I do it remotely. So some example tasks are I've had, um, 
Crystal set up a property virtually. So she has organized the supply closet. She's organized the linens. She has um, taken out the garbage for me. She has changed the batteries on a Wi-Fi lock. Anything, literally anything that I can't do because I live in New York and all the properties are in different states. We pay her, I pay people as generously as I can. Um, uh, I pay her $25 an hour per trip charge. And then that is billed back to the homeowner. And then out of my pocket, I give her like, depending like a hundred to $200 bonus each month, just to show my appreciation. And for all the little things, if she's bringing a package in, I can't justify paying her $25 to bring a package in when she lives five minutes from all the properties in Pinehurst. So I just am like, okay, Crystal, like I'm going to give you a little bonus at the end of the month for all like the little things. But if you're like there at the property for, you know, at least 30, 45 minutes, whatever it is, like you're always going to get that $25. Um, she was a huge help in my linen situation for my 16 person property. She was there for hours, um, making sure that the, the cleaners feel comfortable and that everything is organized. And that another, like, not to like go on a ramble, but like the biggest thing is like, you want everyone to have a seam. You want it to be a seamless partnership. If your cleaner comes to you with an issue, listen to them, make them feel heard. Don't just be like, Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't have to deal with that. It's not my problem. Right. Like these are your people. Cleaners are the lifeblood of running a successful Airbnb. And it's really hard to find a good cleaner, especially now there's limited resources everywhere. So if you bring an issue to me, Thank you for communicating that to me. Thank you for feeling comfortable to bring that to my attention. Let's work through it and let's figure out a solution today, okay? I don't want us to be upset with one another. I just want things to go to be better. We're always working on being better and having it be a great process for each other. So I was working through that now with a cleaner and she's so appreciative. Another, wom another woman, like girl empowerment, you know? Um, and it just, we're working together and we're making sure that this is a, it's a great partnership. I like to have a dedicated partnership. I have a dedicated cleaner for each property. So um, that's kind of my ramble on that, but I just, that it's just so important to make it a, a successful partnership. I love it. That, that if, if my little um, soundboard was, was working, that would have been a, Pound, pound, kind of moment. <laughs> right but like you know what i'm saying like that's that's you know what i mean like that's the reality of of one what makes a successful business successful two that is the grounds as far as i'm concerned that's the grounds for growth because if you don't grow like if you're if you're playing on being a host in any way shape or form may you do arbitrage may you do co-hosting may you start buying a ton of properties that the, the the way that you care about people, may those be your guests or may those be your team members, it, it's what guarantees your success. And there is no, you know, for me, it's always such a turnoff when I go and I meet somebody new and we're going out for dinner. I am the kind of guy that picks out my plate. I put all my stuff on top of my plate. And when the waiter comes over, I hand it to them, right? Or I try to help them. And I watch for that with other people, right? Same thing with the grocery store. Like, do you return your cart or not? And it's not, and it's not a big deal, but at the same time, it is that your mindset of stuff is owed to you, right? Like I go to hotels and I bring my bags up and people are like, let me help you. I'm like, I got hands, <laughs> right? Like I brought this down from my house. I brought this down from the airplane. I can do the same thing, right? And it's not a matter of like not letting people do things for you. It's understanding that somebody doing a job, they're doing a job that's not who they are as a person, right? Like they're not your, your helpers. They are a person, they are Crystal that is doing it for her family. And for her to do it for you the way that she would do it for herself, the only way that will come is if you treat her with respect and you treat her like she's one of your people. 100%. Um, 100%. Yeah. And I mean, the job thing. she was around doing it out of state, but we basically covered that all in one, right? Like, oh. yeah. To, to summarize it, the key is 
having good local boots on the ground and taking care of them, which is exactly what you said, because if something goes sideways, you physically can't be there. So you got to be able to rely on that team. So it's a team, it's a family. Mm-hmm. So like fam. treat them as such and, you know, you can pay them well, bonus them well, but at the same time, you brought up something really important, like listen to them, right? Like listen, like if my cleaners have an issue or contractor has an issue, what can I do to make your life easier? What roadblocks can I remove to make your job easier so that we can all keep this train moving in the right direction, right? Like we move as a unit and that's, that's just business 101, but I don't want to just like brush past that because it's vitally important, whether it's STRs, long-term rentals, any business in general, like you got to move as a unit and take care of your team. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how you empower them, right? Like when you, when they give you feedback and you accept feedback and you value feedback and you make a, a change, the automatic thing is going to happen is like one, they're going to feel valued, listen to, because like how many people do you know that you go into a job and you're like, I think we should do this. And they're like, yeah, we're not doing that. And maybe your idea was a great idea. There was no effort right behind it. And it kind of like demotivates you. Whereas instead, like they are there. Like, I'm like, I don't know what's going on in the property. If this is what you said, this is what we'll do. Like, I don't even need to come and check. Like, I just assume that you're saying it because it, it makes the most amount of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to bring us back to how brutally honest you were about your job. Um, because I think, you know, it's, it's, it was very honest and I don't think a lot of people would have been as honest as you, but I think the reality of the majority of people that want to get into this is that you are doing the bare minimum at your job already without any plans of doing anything with the extra time that you have. Right. So if you have a job, you're like, Oh, and you're making clear or wrong right now, be like, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do the bare minimum. Chances are if we audit your time, you are doing the bare minimum already without any, any reason. Because Claire's reason is I do the bare minimum and I'm doing co-hosting. And I'm telling everybody I'm doing co-hosting. So I'm creating my future. So I'll do the bare minimum here, get, get my benefits, and then spend all the extra time. It's not that I'm not working. I'm doing the bare minimum. They don't fire me. That's their own problem, right? But at the same time, with the extra time that you all have by doing the bare minimum at your, at your job, that's why I think the eight-hour work week is so antiquated because we can all do that shit in like four to five hours, right? So you're all at least wasting a couple hours. This is your business. This is where, these are where, even if you have a full-time job, those are the extra hours that you spend in crafting your systems and running your business. Because if you're telling me and you listen to this, you're like, oh, no, I work 10-hour days. Most people that say that they work 10-hour days, in average, work between six to seven hours, right? Most people that say they sleep eight to nine hours, in average, sleep six to seven hours, right? We all have this idea that we overestimate hard things that we do and how long we do them for. And in reality, we're not doing them for that long, and we just don't audit our time. And it's easier. It's easier to say, I don't have time because I have a full-time job. I'll give, I'll give everybody an exercise that I do personally at least once a quarter and my team's doing it right now. <clears throat> do a two week time study. So what I mean by that is you're going to take a, make yourself a little calendar or whatever from 5 a.m. to midnight and every 15 minutes, have it printed. Don't do this electronically. But just trust me, print it and write it out, handwrite it. Every 15 minutes, write down what you're doing. And I promise you, like, I feel like I'm a pretty efficient guy. I promise you every time I do it, I find new ways that I'm wasting time on certain things. Or it's it's bringing about like, wow, that actually took me three hours to get done when I thought it was gonna be 45 minutes. How can I do it more effective next time? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound like the sexiest thing, but I promise you the first two days are annoying, but after that, it becomes a habit. And, you know, I recommend at least two weeks doing it every single day, like Sunday to Sunday, even weekends to figure out where you're spending your time. And I ended up doing it for three weeks and didn't even realize it just because I got in the habit of doing it. But you'll notice you'll become way more efficient and then 
having a clear vision of where you're going. Like Claire said, like, I'm not going to be a lifetime employee here. I'm not condoning like half-assing work. That's not what I'm saying, right? She's getting done what she needs to get done. What I'm saying though is when you're clear on this is where I'm going, you're going to find those hours in that time to get done what you need to get done. So it's going to make you more focused at work to bang out whatever your workload is in that five-hour window instead of the eight-hour window. So you can take that hour lunch break and focus on your SDR business. Maybe you can spend an extra half an hour or an hour in the morning before work and an extra hour to an hour and a half after work. The reality is like when I started, I've said this so many times, it's like I was working 60 hours a week at a full-time job, like crazy hours. I had a side hustle as a photographer and I had a sick kid in the hospital. So when people tell me I don't have time, I call BS. You're just not making the time. You're not looking hard enough to find the time. You can get by on, I'm not a proponent of like the Gary Vee, you don't need to sleep type stuff. We all need to sleep. It's not possible to do this without sleeping. But I know for me, my body, I'm good on seven hours. Like if I can get more than that, great. But I know I can operate on seven hours and still have mental clarity. So if I go to bed at 11, I can get up at at what? Six, Six. five, like whatever. Like I don't need to sleep late. Or if I do work late, because I'm a night owl too. Sometimes if I do work till one in the morning for whatever reason, I'm like in the zone on something. I'm like, no, just finish it then cool. Then I'll sleep till eight or nine if I have to, you know? So just audit your time and be focused, laser focused on what you actually want to achieve. And you'll start moving the needle a little bit every single day, just 1% every single day. Right. And then you'll look back in eight months, like Claire, and you're like, wow, I've got eight properties with a few more in the works. And I'm like, I'm making this happen, but it's Mm -hmm. those little things. And you touched on it earlier, doing the journaling of writing out that goal every day and sending it to an accountability partner. She sent it to me every day for what, three months, maybe? It was a long time. Yeah. It was a long time. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think around three months. Yeah. And it, it just like ingrains that clarity of like, this is what I'm going to do, period. Like, no matter what, I don't care what's going on at my other job. Like, I will find time to make this happen. So I want to be respectful of your time. And before we get into the last question, I want to acknowledge you. First, I'm super proud of you. I know you were nervous to get into this. It was a big leap for you and you persisted, right? You persisted, you stuck with it long enough to get the first deal and then the second and then the third and now the eighth. And I think you have like three more in the works. You'll be at 10 or 11 pretty soon. Like you persisted and you're raw, real, vulnerable. Those are all awesome qualities. And so I don't want you to be ashamed of those. So you're like, I know I wear my heart on my sleeve. That's a good thing. Like E said. Mm -hmm. Now, the last question that we ask all of our guests is what is your number one, number one secret to success with short-term rentals? Oh God, just thinking about short-term rental. (laughs) Like, um, I would say persistence, um, and consistency are my two biggest things um with consistency i think that you you can't be afraid to fire someone so (laughs) i've gone through a lot of cleaners if someone's not gonna apply feedback they're out right if you tell them like for my example i'm shocked i'm not fired right now right like i would fire myself in my w2 but i'm saying i've just learned about people like you have to treat people well And I do treat people well, but some people, they just, they don't care. You could do everything in the world. And, you know, obviously you can't pay a cleaner a thousand dollars, right? It's relative to what it is, but you have to treat them well and you're doing everything you can, but if they just don't care and you've done everything you can, you have to move on to the next, right? You need, it has to be a team mentality and everyone has to be in it together. So um, that would be my success. I love it. And where can folks learn more about you, get in touch with you, listen to the podcast, all that good stuff? Um, sorry, I'm a dancer. To, uh, I mean, I danced in high school. Okay. Um, the podcast, Millennial Millionaire Through Real Estate Podcast, it's a tongue twister. I did not want that to be the name. Um, and then um, info or short t- short term made easy.com is the website. Um, Clary Berry 18 on Instagram from when I was a kid. 
I guess I'm still kind of a kid. But um, yeah, Claire Rosenberg anywhere on LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you want to find me. I love to help people um, and just share best practices and share my experiences. So if you do reach out, I will respond. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on here. Really appreciate it. E, any parting words, brother? No, Claire, super proud of you. Um, I see you. I see you in the community always asking questions. And I, and I think, honestly, that is the biggest mindset piece is, is to continuously be a learner. Uh, yeah, girl, you just keep rocking it. Be, be who you are. Um, yeah, guys, I, don't, I ain't got nothing else. All right. I love it. Well, guys, thank you so much for showing up. Claire, thank you for being here and we'll see you guys all next week. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Hey, STR Nation. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. And in the comments, let us know what topics you want us to cover on upcoming episodes. And we'll make sure to get that in the books for you. And if you really want to learn how to launch, automate, and scale your short-term rental business, if you want to go deeper, then check out our free masterclass at strsecrets.com.